We are trying to get the pay and working conditions and other material elements of every employee's job up to and kept up to the ever-rising standards in these respects for what the employee does. And we are trying to do this to the greatest extent possible voluntarily in the light of the information available, including especially that we get from the employee and his union. And second, we are trying as managers to put the human considerations up front with the pay. We are trying to be certain we respect and fiercely protect the dignity of the individual employee to help him understand the importance of what he is doing and have a sound basis for a genuine sense of participation, to have him find our whole association together pleasant and rewarding. So, third, we go on beyond that, and we in management are trying to learn and then to teach thoroughly the economic facts of life, how we got this good, how we can go on and get better. And we're trying to give our employees and their families and neighbors such aid and encouragement as we can in their getting complete and accurate facts on which they can come to their own conclusions about the parts played in a free economy by this member, these members of the team, the customer, the employee, the manager, and the citizen who has risked his savings in a business. And what, we are, and what are the just rewards of each of these, no one of whom will do his part or even try if he doesn't feel he's going to be fairly paid. Probably the most important fact of economics for us here tonight, I think, uh, is that here in America there are two ways to make money. One, through wages for personal effort, and two, through return on savings, accumulated through self-denial and then invested or risk. Any profit earned from such risking, earned in competition, comes from overall effectiveness in operating a business within the competitive prices at which less effective competitors are only breaking even. Now why we feel our experience indicates profit sharing is not the answer or a good reliable aid even to good employee relations. First, profit sharing does not reward an employee for what he accomplishes in the area under his control. The employee just isn't sure his application and cooperation and effectiveness, effectiveness is matched by those other employees out of his sight or by the boss even. Second, profit sharing has to be some, on some arbitrary basis, both as to the percentage of the profit and as to the way it's divided among employees. We, should argue, we could argue here all night on whether profit sharing should take 5 or 50 percent or 75 percent of the profits of the business. There can be no inherently or mechanically just basis. No matter how much it is, employees naturally can't see any reason why it shouldn't be greater, why you, why you stopped where you did, and there really isn't any reason. Third, any percentage or amount is gratefully received in the beginning, but wears off in our experience. It gets taken for granted after a time. Not only ceases to be a source of gratitude, but may do more harm than good. First, in distemper because it isn't arbitrarily higher, and second, through having gotten employee expenditures and commitments up to a new high level, unwarranted by reasonably certain future income. Four, profit sharing without capital risk or risk of savings gives a false impression, I feel, of the system of private property and of incentives. It isn't a way for us all to act for our own good. As the capitalists, we all are. They are for the good of our fellow citizens. Five, I think the employers, these distinguished gentlemen who feel profit sharing has succeeded for them, uh, have to be uh, in relatively small or inherently intimate businesses, or they as managers are being mighty modest with themselves. I think their success in employee relations is not from the profit sharing, but from a whole lot of other things they and their associates do right along on the employee relations front.